Hey everyone! We are so excited to be back with you for another Sunday and another cool story from the Bible. Yeah, and we also just want to let you know that we loved the responses to our challenges last week. Mm -hmm. You guys were awesome and we have some pretty amazing bottle flippers and coin catchers amongst yeah, us. Yeah, we do. Check this out. obviously loved our challenges so we have another one for you. Yes, in just a moment the scene that you see in front of you is going to change in 10 significant ways. And it could be to do with me. Could be to do with me. Or the surroundings around us. Absolutely, your task is quite simply to spot the 10 differences between this scene and that. And as usual, we love a competition, so get competitive with the people you live in so you can spot the differences first, or put them in the chat and let us know which things you find that are different. Yeah, some of them are easy, some of them are a little bit harder. So you've got 10 seconds to really study the scene that you can see, and we are going to stay as still as we possibly can. Sir? Yeah. Stay really still. Really itchy nose. Yeah, but you gotta stay still. Five more seconds. But my nose is itching. Three. Oh no. Two. Oh no. One. Ah, Okay, did you spot them all? And how many do you think you got? I love a good spot the difference. Me too. And it reminds me of a, one of the Bible heroes, Saul. Did you say Paul? Well, yeah. Paul, but also Saul. So it's Saul and Paul? No, it's Saul who became Paul. I'm confused. Well, it's a little confusing. But this guy has two names. For today, we'll call him Saul. Okay, Saul. Saul was a very religious man. He'd grown up following the laws of God and trying to make sure everyone else did too. The problem was, Saul was quite strict in his understanding of the rules and the laws and he really didn't like it when, it, when people started talking about this man called Jesus and how he was the son of God, able to save people from their sins. Didn't really fit with what Saul knew about God. At this point, Jesus already returned to heaven but his followers were spreading the news about Jesus as far as fast as they could. And why wouldn't they? Jesus died for our sins. He rose back to life. Why wouldn't they want to tell everyone who'd listen? But Saul didn't really like this. He wasn't trying to be mean. He thought he was defending God, but he ended up trying to imprison and kill followers of Jesus. Yeah, as a result, Saul wasn't seen as a very nice man. He caused a lot of pain, a lot of sadness for followers of Jesus, and he made loads of people really scared and afraid. But God had a plan for him. An amazing plan. You see, God doesn't look at what we look at. He doesn't see our outward actions and assume that's all there is. He looks at the heart. And he really wanted Saul to be a follower of him. And he wasn't willing to wait one minute longer. Nope. When Saul was on a journey, on his way to a new place where he'd planned and threatened to murder loads of new Christians, God met with him. Saul's journey was cut short by a huge flash of light and a voice from heaven. Saul, why do you persecute me? It stopped him in his tracks. Jesus revealed in this voice that it was he speaking to Saul from heaven. And he told him, go to Damascus and wait there for instructions. Saul does what he's told, but the first of his big changes happens here. He loses the ability to see. Yeah, he stands up and he is completely blind. And his followers and friends have to actually help him get to where he needs to be. And after a few days in Damascus, God sends a man called Ananias 
to lay hands on Saul and restore his sight. He says to Ananias, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name. Quite the plan for a man who has been hating Jesus' followers pretty much from the beginning. But when he does this, Saul is miraculously healed. He can see again, but not only that. Saul is completely transformed. Change from the inside out. Imagine a little caterpillar who goes into a cocoon and then comes out as a beautiful butterfly. This man could not have been more different. A couple of verses later in the story, we are told at once he began to preach the good news of God. And Saul went on to spread this news through the whole world. He goes to prison because he completely refuses to change the message. This message about Jesus who changed his life. So Saul, or Paul, as he is more often known later, went on to write a lot of the New Testament books. In fact, he wanted everyone to know that their past and who they used to be didn't have to define or change who they were in the future. In a book called Romans, he later said, Do not be shaped by this world. Instead, be changed within by a new way of thinking. Then you will be able to know what God wants for you, and you will be able to know what is good and pleasing to God. And that's our memory verse for this week, guys. So head over to the Kids Church resources on the website for more activities and more information on this amazing story. And we've got some cool plans to get you guys involved more on a Sunday morning in future. So parents and kids team in particular, please check your emails and texts to see if you've got that information. Let us know if you haven't received anything and we'll send that on to you as soon as we can. So guess what? See you next week. Bye. Bye.